Hello, my name is Robert Doble, Product Manager here at Finning UK, the Caterpillar dealer in the UK and Ireland. I'm here today to talk about the next generation of Caterpillar backhoe loaders, the F-Series backhoe loader, and specifically the 432F that we're going to show you around today. Here we are at the front of the machine, and I specifically want to look at the loader arms. The new heavy-duty loader arms have been redesigned from scratch. What they've done is they've maintained all the features from the E-Series backhoe loader. They're still heavy-duty, you've still got great digging forces, but by making them a little bit longer, changing the shape of the uh, arm itself, they've actually managed to create more load over height just to make it easier for an operator to load into a truck. There's one very significant change on the uh, F-Series backhoe loader at the front of the machine. You'll see the front of the machine, the ball nose, looks very different from the E-Series. You've got a new grille, you've got a new ex access panel here, which allows you to get at the battery isolator. But if you actually release both of these levers, you'll see that the whole of this panel comes right up. Your aircon matrix is mounted on the outer grille getting easy for cleaning cleaning out and then you've got the uh, main cooling pack package mounted in behind her again you can get in to give uh, more access there if you did need to clean out any debris that got caught up in there an additional change is that the battery on the machine is now mounted down at the front right over the front top of the counterweight at the front of the machine round on the right hand side of the machine and this pannier area here we have the new toolbox integrated into the step because we've removed the battery from this area, moving it to the front of the machine, acting as a, a bit of an additional counterweight, it's given us more space within the toolbox. If I open it up to show you there, you can see quite a lot of space for storing uh, quite a good variety of tools in this machine. Very simple and easy to use, and of course it can be padlocked. Around it, we have integrated the step system. So the right-hand side step, not the heaviest use side of the machine, but you still have a good, safe platform to climb off of the machine for either accessing and out of the cab or for doing service operations around the machine. Here at the back of the machine, where the excavator is, we have the main machine sliding frame. You see the sliding frames in a, a black matte finish. This is uh, purposely done to give the sliding frame uh, a good surface to, to uh, travel left to right on. Um, it's specifically left unpainted so that the paint doesn't come off, but it's a non-corrosive finish. It's called um, an e-coat finish. So it's been uh, dipped into uh, a painting process which etches into the surface of the paint and um, will not allow any corrosion, but it allows the sliding frame to move across the machine very, very simply and easily. Um, hydraulically clamped on as backhoe loaders always have been um, and we, what we have on the top here where the whole weight of the um, sliding frame sits we have a small wear pad in the top there which can be replaced if necessary. Um, on this specific machine we have additional options of extra light guard and we have street pads for working on, um, on uh, metal surfaces, on tarmac surfaces. The main swing post here at the back has been beefed up in recent years. You have a top and a bottom clevis clamping the whole lot together. Very strong, durable design, guaranteed to um, outlive the life of the machine in terms of its durability. Also, through the centre of here, you can see that the hose routing using cat abrasion resistant hoses is uh, all neat. Everything's got a, a place to go and it all sits in its place. Hoses are routed nicely through the machine. There's no chance of them catching or damaging during their working life. I'm standing more or less underneath the main Caterpillar boom structure on the back of the F-Series backhoe loader. You can see the boom has a kind of banana shape to it, it's specifically shaped to dig clearly into deep trenches, give a lot of reach for the excavator, give you a long trench without having to move the machine and give good visibility for the operator when he's working with the machine. The whole design of this has been changed to give it a stronger structure a slightly different angle to accommodate larger digging buckets which you see on more modern, more powerful machines. And an integration into this boom structure is this uh, scratch plate here. We have a scratch plate, inevitably with some very big buckets, it is still easy for the operator to accidentally collide with the, the, uh, the boom on the machine. But by having a scratch plate there, it doesn't do any serious damage to the machine and it can easily and simply just be touched up um, quite regularly by the operator. At the back of the machine here, where the boom meets the stick, 
you can see that the hose re routing has been significantly changed on later generation machines. What we've done is integrated the hose routing inside the boom structure so that the hoses aren't seen, they're protected, they don't catch on anything. It's an area where a lot of backhoe loaders suffer that the hoses can easily get caught on things when the machine is operating. If it's at height, perhaps on trees or in a trench, they're catching on the edge of a trench. Nowadays, the hoses are neatly laid within the main boom structure. They're hidden out of the way. They don't get damaged. They don't get in the way of the operator. They don't obscure his visibility when he's working in a trench. And of course, it's more reliable, more durable, and it's not going to cause a failure, which is going to give him downtime. On the stick on the excavator of the F-Series backer loader, we now have an inner slider. So we have a, uh, what Caterpillar call an E-stick, an extending stick. So it's an inner part and an outer part, allowing the operator to reach further into a trench, get a longer trench when he's, he's excavating, or reach deeper into the ground when he's uh, doing a deeper dig. This is mounted on nylon wear pads. Um, allows it to slide in and out very, very simply and easily from the uh, operator controls. And over time, obviously, the nylon will wear. And very simply, by using four bolts on each side of this, the stick here, we can just take up any slack and adjust that back to its, its new condition. At the farthest reach of the excavator, we have the real business end, the bit that does the digging. Obviously, Caterpillar work tool, Caterpillar bucket on this machine, fixed onto a double locking quick hitch and the linkage here integrates a lifting eye. This machine is actually fitted with a full object handling kit, allowing the machine to lift up to two tons of weight by using that lifting eye. The object handling kit on this uh, excavator is made up of a number of elements. First of all, both the boom and the stick cylinders have a check valve on them, so that if you should have any kind of hose failure, the assembly cannot drop under its own weight, it locks solid. Um, it also integrates the lifting eye, which we showed at the back of the machine near the, uh, the quick hitch at the excavator uh, bucket end. And then it has an overload warning device, an electronic device, which beeps to the operator um, if the machine should become overloaded. And then there is a switch for actually isolating the system so that it's not in operation when the machine's doing its normal job, which is excavating. So all of that package together gives you a complete object handling kit allows the machine to lift weights of up to two, two tons depending on the orientation of the excavator on the machine. One of the biggest moves forward with the latest generation of backhoe loaders is the option of a lock-up torque converter transmission. Um, this is standard on premier machines, it's an option on other machines. What it gives you is first of all a torque converter which is much larger than previous generations. You've got more driving force from the moment you pull away or the moment you push into a heap. Once the machine gets up to speed, the machine will actually lock up its whole transmission, allowing all of the engine power to be transmitted to the, to the wheels, giving you higher, speed, higher transport speeds, shorter time travelling from A to B and increased fuel efficiency. We've seen conservative, conservatively already about 4% reduction in fuel consumption. Um, travel time from A to B on a pretty typical cycle of a machine's working day, we're seeing already about 11% um, reduction in the time spent to actually do a job. On the left hand side of the uh, 432F here, we have a new um, plastic fuel tank. The fuel tank obviously not being painted, black in colour, and of course it's made from a non-corrosive material, so there's no chance of that, uh, that degrading over the time life of the machine. We've looked at how the front of the machine now opens up, uh, giving very, very clear access to the uh, cooling pack on the machine. The new bonnet now hinges from the front. There's a release handle just under the uh, cab door here at the front. Pull it, bonnet, climb, bonnet just lit, raises itself on its um, gas struts. There's now, um, with the fenders, there's a, a new tread plate here, so that as you climb up on the machine, you can actually get into a position with your foot on that tread plate where you can very easily get in at the engine area, get to uh, all the dipsticks and the fill-up areas uh, quite conveniently, standing quite comfortably on the machine. The operator environment. Nice, big, comfortable, spacious cab on this machine. You've got a great seat, lots of adjustments, armrests, um, lots of integration on the seat. 
We have a steering column which can be adjusted to any angle. You can get it exactly where you need it. Nice position to be comfortably driving the machine. Visibility through this front windscreen and down the sides of the machine is fabulous. What the Caterpillar guys have done is they've actually moved the back of the bonnet up but lowered the front to give you actually more visibility over the front of the machine even though the engine canopy is much bigger than it was on, uh, on the E-Series backhoe loader. Nice comfortable position to drive in. Um, nothing to do on the transmission to operate that torque lock transmission. You just um, set the machine into whatever, whatever gear you want to work and uh, the machine will work out the locking up torque converter automatically on its own. Once it gets up to a set speed it will just, it will just uh, click in and then the transmission is locked up. Sat here, nice pilot operated front controller for the loader arms. Sat here, if I just move the steering wheel out of the way, release the seat I can just move around into the rear operator position, seat locks in again, and then I can bring the rear loader controls into a comfortable position, and I can see very clearly out of the back of the machine. Now I'm in the back of the machine, I can open the rear window right up, it gives me a nice little rain canopy. I've got great little heat events here that can either blow cold air with the air conditioning on a hot day, or I can obviously blow uh, hot air if I'm working in a colder environment. Lots of different vents to point point at the operator and keep them in a comfortable position. The pilot controls, you might have seen as I uh, move them back, just move them back into a comfortable working position, maybe bring the seat a little bit forward if necessary, and get a really good comfortable position. If I bring the seat right forward, I can use those pilot controls um, while I'm looking deep into a trench and still effectively and comfortably work that excavator. The final element of the object handling cat, the final element of the object handling kit is here within the cab. Basically, on the dashboard, there's a warning light and a buzzer that sounds to warn the operator if he's overloaded the excavator during a lifting operation. Obviously, this could be an inconvenience if you were doing an excavator operation. So, just a flick of a switch and that's now turned into a normal excavator. If you want to go back to a lifting operation, just put it back in lifting mode and you've got the protection of that, over, uh, that uh, object handling kit overload warning device.